Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. All right, so we untap. So Ephemerate comes down, bounces Avalanche Rider, blows up land. <laughs> Ooh, no matter what we try to play, we end up being land destruction, apparently. <laughs> blow up a land. <laughs> uh, yeah, we will not pay Echo. This Avalanche Rider has done some work. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Much Brew About Nothing, and today, we are checking out Ikoria in Modern, starting with, oh man, one of my favorite decks to play anyway, which is Soul Herder, just blinky card draw value stuff, but with the big new addition of Yarion, which is like perfectly designed for this deck, because we already want to blink stuff, we already have all this stuff with enter the battlefield card draw triggers, or blow up a land trigger, whatever, so Yarion's like a natural inclusion for this deck, so we are playing 80 card Soul Herder Yarion in Modern, this exact build comes from uh, Gab Nassif, who's been playing on his stream and having fun with it so uh i figured we'd give it a shot because this is my style of deck so let's break down yarian soul herder jump into the game starting with yarian sky nomad so yarian it's our eighth card in hand and in this deck in specific it's more than just an eighth card it's actually insane in our deck because we have all these random cheap creatures with enter the battlefield triggers so by the time yarian comes down maybe on turn four ish in our deck we often have at least two or three things that we can blink to draw a card and in the late game it gets even more absurd we're going to just be like drawing a new hand when Yarian enters the battlefield. To go along with Yarian, we got some more blink stuff. Soul Herder Ephemerate, just ways to repeatedly blink our creatures for value. Also worth mentioning, Soul Herder, really sweet with Yarian. One of the cool tricks the deck can do because Soul Herder gets a plus one plus one counter whenever a creature is exiled. We can have a Soul Herder, maybe even two Soul Herders, then we Yarian and exile all of our non-Soul Herder creatures, which is going to put a ton of counters on Soul Herder and end up with like a 10-10 Soul Herder or something ridiculous. Ephemerate, not only saves our creatures from removal. It's insane with the Aryan. We can reset it to blink everything again. Also just lets us reuse enter the battlefield triggers, holding together our AD card deck. We have Court of Calling. So this just helps us find whatever creature we need in a given situation. It'll make more sense as we get to the higher end of our curve and talk about our combo finish. Also talk about some of our one ofs In the early game though, we get a bunch of mana fixing and mana ramp. Birds of Paradise, Noble Hire, Arkham's Astrolab, just fixing our mana starting on turn number one. Then in the two drop slot, it's all card draw creatures. Coiling Oracle, Icewing Quattle, Wall of Blossoms, well, all technically different. When it boils down to it, they each draw a card when they enter the battlefield. So these cards work great with Soul Herder, just draw an extra card each turn. Work great with Yarion, often drawing us a bunch of cards, Ephemera, all that stuff. Then we have our last two four ofs, which are Avalanche Riders, Eternal Witness. Avalanche Riders blows up a land when it comes into play, and sometimes we can just be like a weird land destruction deck where you like Avalanche Riders, then we flicker with Ephemerate to blow up another land, then we Soul Herder to blow up another land, then we Yarion to blink everything, blow up another land, and kind of just grind our opponent out of the game, even though that's not our primary game plan, that does happen on occasion that we're just this weird land destruction deck. Eternal Witness, getting back stuff from our graveyard, combos with Cord, we can like Cord for Eternal Witness, get back Cord, Cord for something bigger because we have another creature for Convoke, then we have all of our like one of type stuff, Knight of Autumn, the Swiss Army Knight, does a little bit of everything. Life gain for aggro, blowing up artifacts and enchantments. Huntmaster clogs up the board, makes some more life gain in a wolf token. Venser stops anything temporarily, works well with our blink effects. Another way to bounce lands. Acidic slime, kind of a catch-all, another land destruction spell. And then to close out the game, while we often just generate a ton of value and beat our opponent down with a motley crew of enter the battlefield creatures, we also have a combo in Restoration Kiki Jiki. So eventually, as we draw through our deck with Yarion and all these enter the battlefield stuff and all this flicker stuff. We'll either find enough Court of Callings to find Resto and Kiki, or we'll just draw into them. The, the main combo, if you've never seen it, Restoration Angel can blink Kiki to untap it, essentially, which lets us tap Kiki to make a Restoration Angel, which blinks Kiki to untap it to make a Restoration Angel. So the end result is infinite three, four flying hasty Restorations. Let me just beat our opponent down and win the game. Mana base, not going to talk about all the lands. We got 29, but they are all either fetch lands, shock lands, or snow-covered basic lands. In the sideboard, we got Yarion. It's up a sideboard slot. Way more than worth it in this deck, though. Path to Exile gives us some removal. Our main deck is very removal light, but we have four paths in the sideboard. Then we have a ton 
one more one of silver bullet type creatures. A collector oof for artifact decks, Lavinia good against Tron, and also Mishra Bobble now, which is a big deal thanks to Loris. Yixa Jailer for graveyard decks, same with Loaming Shaman, Avon Mind Sensor for searching, Eidolon for storm, Megas of the Boon to jank people out, Thrag Tusk and Buried Fort Center good against Aggro and Mono Red decks, Deputy for more removal, and that is Yarion Soul Herder for modern. And that's our bunch of brew deck for today. So let's jump into the league, see how well 80 card Yarion Soul Herder actually works with the format. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. If you enjoyed today's deck, make sure to purchase it from our sponsor, Card Kingdom. For a limited time, you can get a Scoop Soldier sticker for free if you mention Scoop Soldier in your order notes during checkout. All right, much brew about nothing time. We are companioning in modern, playing some some Yarion Soul Hoarder, and uh, yeah, that's fine. We'll keep it. Wait, what happened? Where's our? Oh, there's our there's our Yarion. Yep. All right, we're good. I mean, we have ramp. We have, we have ramp. We have a court of calling. So I think we're in fine-ish shape. Birds of Paradise for our impudent. And Yarion doesn't do much yet. Blinking Wall Bottoms is still something though. Cord is a big one. So opponent, some sort of snow deck by the looks. Impudent. Uh, uh, wooded foothills. Um. Huh. Uh, yeah, let's just Stomping Grounds, Untapped, and Noble Hierarch. Go. Opponent. Temple Garden, Tapped. And... Ooh, Fiend Artisan, that's spicy. We don't actually have a, a way to deal with that at the moment. Opponent. Passing. Quaddle. Uh, yeah, let's just... Wall of Blossoms, draw a card. Play... Snow-Covered Plains, pass the turn. Well... Next turn, we can start blowing up lands if we want to. We can, like, Avalanche Rider, Ephemera Avalanche Rider. We'll see what our opponent can do with Fiend Artisan. Then go up to, what, a three drop, maybe? Possibly, possibly a three drop, if they sack the birds. Snow-covered forest for our opponent. Voice of Resurgence. That's a good card to sack. This is going to get interesting. Well, we'll see the power of Yaria. Does Yarion having this extra card in hand, does that... <laughs> Overcome the value our opponent's about to generate. Bota, gaba. Ooh, passes. All right. Well, in that case, I think we just... I think we just attack the mana. So we will... Wooded Foothills. Crack it. Snow-covered forest. Uh, do we? Yeah, I think we do. One, two, three, four. Avalanche Rider. Blow up Temple Garden past the turn set of upkeep stop so next turn we can we can blink the avalanche rider before it goes away and blow up another land sacred foundry for our opponent untapped and passes well let's ephemera avalanche rider blow up sacred foundry we got company Ooh, opponent's gonna cord okay what can they cord for cordex three for eternal witness to get back a land okay well, that's better than getting back the cord, probably. So blow up another land. We do not have to pay Echo. What can we cord for? Is it, Can we cord for anything that's, like, particularly devastating? One, two, three. We can go up to X3. Soul Herder seems decent. Maybe we just go get a Soul Herder. Let's Misty Rainforest. Crack Misty Rainforest. Snow-covered Island. Court of Calling. One, two, three, one, two, three, get Soul Herder. And I think we just keep blowing up lands, honestly. So we pass the turn, end of turn, Soul Herder, Blink Avalanche Riders. Yes. Um, Blow up a snow-covered forest. Avalanche Rider does not care if the land's basic. So we have our opponent pretty low on resources now. And we have Ephemerate next turn, and we have the Soul Herder going. We're not especially close to comboing off, but we're pretty close to just, like, locking our opponent out of doing anything super relevant. Stomping grounds for our opponent. Opponent really needs a removal spell. Untapped. Going to Fiend Artisan. All right, first Fiend Artisan activation. Sax Voice, going to get a one drop. Probably a mana producer. Yeah, gets the birds. Opponent. Passes. All right, so we untap. 
we want Ephemerate first. So Ephemerate comes down, bounces Avalanche Rider, blows up land. <laughs> Ooh, no matter what we try to play, we end up being land destruction, apparently. <laughs> Blow up the land. <laughs> uh, yeah. We will not pay Echo. This Avalanche Rider has done some work. Oh, another Avalanche Rider. Huh. Well, one, two. Ice Fang Quad, I'll draw a card. Um, Astrolabe, draw a card. Wooded Foothills. Pass the turn. Next turn, it's possible we should have just Yari on this turn. I think we're going to do it next turn. So Blink Avalanche Rider, again. Put our opponent down to zero lands for the time being. Although the two Birds of Paradise means our opponent can still do things. Opponent untaps. Well, so far so good. <laughs> Accidental land destruction, not deck. About it. Going to path Soul Herder. Yup. Yeah. Um, Snow Covered Island. That's fine. Uh, about it. Combat. No attacks. Well, we will. Sack what it fails. Yeah, I think it's Yarion time. We get to draw three off Yarion, which seems decent. Uh, we will take a Stomping Grounds. Just in case we end up drawing Kiki. So we're finally going to let this Avalanche Rider die. Ooh, Fencer. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Do we steal Yarion? I kind of think we do. It's too much, too much value to pass up, right? One, two, three, four, five. If we wait a turn, we can fence her first? Huh. Well, go to combat. Yeah, I think we're going to wait and fence her. I think that's safest. So get him in Coatl, hit our opponent. It's going to be hard to lose this turn if we leave up Venser. And then Venser gives us something else that is good to blink with the Aria next turn. Put it down to 13. Hollowed Fountain tapped. Pass the turn. All right, next turn is the Aria turn. Opponent cracks. Snow covered forest. Cord. Uh, yeah, let's just Venser that. Oh boy, this Yarian's gonna be absurd. <laughs> Pwn it. Oh, play a land. Oh, it's gonna be so insane if nothing goes wrong. Astrolabe, sure, draws a card. Because we have enough mana, we can actually play this Avalanche Rider first. Stomping Grounds. Tapped. All right. All right. Let, let's see the power of Yarian. <laughs> About it. What do you got? Well, in a fair matchup like this, Yarian seems insane. Opponent combat. Passes. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. All right, we are going to see. We are going to see Yariad power here. Ooh, wait. Hmm. We could eternal witness to get back a fem. Oh, that's you. E oh my goodness, that's even insaner. All right, so one, two, three. Eternal witness gets back ephemerate, and now Yariad power. One, two, three, four, five. Hiding in our hand, quote unquote, Yarion. Actually, you know what? We should leave up a basic just in case. Let's leave up a basic. We can make mana of any color anyway. So uh, Yarion comes down. Blink any number of non lands, which is so insane. Yarion, we will blink. Oh my goodness, this is so good. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, five permanents. Pass the turn. Watch our opponent be able to cord for to Kali Honor Guard. They can't be playing that in their deck because they're an internal win his deck, but that would be insanely brutal. Uh, so we will pass the turn. End of turn. Very good things will happen. If they really have to Kali Honor Guard, I might quit magic. They, <laughs> You can't in your internal witness deck. There's just, there ain't no way. There's no way about it. <laughs> just a wall of fruits. That's fine. So we will get a few triggers. Uh, so let's see. Venser, Bounce, Wall of Roots. Draw a card, draw a card, draw a card. Eternal Witness back, Court of Calling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> doing it, doing it, doing it. Draw, draw, draw. Bounce. Pass the turn. If we need to, we can Ephemerate. Wall of Roots, returns. Yeah. If our opponent taps out, we can just ephemerate Yarion? Okay, opponent is to... Oh, boy. All right, opponent. Well, hopefully you're getting something that wins you the game because 
If you are not this Yarion, all right, Pony can find something three or less. So far, Fiend Artisan seems to be losing to Yarion. <laughs> uh huh. What do you got, opponent? It needs to be like insanely good. <laughs> Orzov Pontiff. Oh, this is not going to work as well as you hoped. Uh, Blink Yarion. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. That sounds fine. Oh, no, we didn't blink Noble High Arc. Oops. Should have been six, but okay. Okay. Slight mistake. I don't think it's actually going to punish us too badly. Opponent gets in, hits us. Sure, 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 sure. So end of turn. The dorks return. Oh, Yarion's good. Yarion's so good. <laughs> uh, yeah, here they come. We will draw some cards. We will bounce. Let's see. Bounce this token that's annoying. Draw. Draw. Eternal Witness back. I guess the Noble High Arc that we let die for no reason. Uh, so draw a card. Get back Eternal Witness. Yeah, that was that was a little punt, but hopefully we have enough value that it doesn't matter. Draw a card. I think we'll draw a card. I think we will Venser the token. We will untap Ephemerate. Blank Eternal Witness. Eternal Witness. Get back Ephemerate. Um, can we win here? I, can we win? Noble High Arc. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. I don't think we can quite win here. One, two, three. One, two, three, or five. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Actually, maybe we can. All right, so Court of Calling. I think we can just win with the Kiki combo. One, two. Actually, I guess we get to play Birds for first free. So play Birds of Paradise. Breeding Pool, untap down to seven. Court of Calling. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so Cordex four gets us Restoration Angel, Blink's Noble High Arc, and then Cord X five gets Kiki, and then we just go infinite. Well, uh, I think that was a good example of the power of this deck. Cord X five, Kiki time. Kiki makes a resto. And opponent knows what's happening, scoops it up, and that was impressive. And not only was it impressive, that was Yarion impressive. Like, Yarion was absurd. It was absolutely over-the-top, ridiculously absurd. How many cards did Yarion draw us? Ten? <laughs> like, that was arguably the reason that we won the game, was that we had Yarion and our opponent didn't. Like, if we were just playing it fairly, it would have been this, like, grindy match with who knows who would have came out on top. But... Because we were playing a companion, we just, like, got a free win, essentially. Uh, so, against our opponent's creature deck, I think we want paths. That seems like the biggest thing. And probably Aven Mind Sensor. Oof, no. Shaman, no. Um, this would shut down our opponent's cords. Might be worth it. Maybe, like, Cord Deputy of Attention? Question's gonna be, what do we take out? That is the big question. Uh, Avalanche Rider was insane. I think we want to keep that. Noble Eric Birds, Astrolabe, Wall of Blossoms, Coiling Oracle, Quaddle. We can go down the Night of Autumn. Maybe we go down Acidic Slime. Oh, it's actually hard to find enough stuff to cut. I guess we can go, like, one Resto, an Avalanche Rider. Maybe, yeah, maybe Lavinia's too cute. Lavinia... <sighs> all right, all right, let's, let's just bring in the past. Let's minimize... Let's minimize a little bit. All right, even though Avalanche Rider is good, it's probably better as a tutor target. It's not like it just straight up beats our opponent's deck because they have mana dorks. Although, every, having Avalanche Rider every turn <laughs> seemed like a pretty effective way to beat our opponent's deck. Uh, yes, we will start with Yarion in hand. Thank you. <laughs> All right, opponent. You can play the seven card life. We'll play the eight card life. <laughs> It's such a big advantage. Oh, no, opponent's going to play the six card life. So the math on six cards versus seven cards, already not great. I imagine the math on six cards versus eight cards is uh, is even worse. <laughs> I mean, it is London Mulligan, so it's not just game over or anything, but opponent. Razor Verge Thicket. Oh, Braiding Pool tapped. 
pass the turn. This hand's not bad, I guess. Soul Herder was a nice draw. We get to Wall of Blossoms, into Soul Herder, Blink Wall of Blossoms. And our opponent doesn't look to be playing a fast combo deck. Like, they probably have combos in their deck, but it doesn't seem like they are really focused on, like, w comboing off on turn three or something. Wall of Blossoms. And if you're playing a fair grindy matchup, it is really hard to outgrind Soul Herder and Yarian. <laughs> Perhaps impossible, opponent. Still doing nothing, sure. Hmm. No, well, Sacred Foundry, untapped. And, yeah, let's, uh, let's get Soul Herder going. Pass the turn. If our opponent has Path, that's fine. At least we get a land out of the deal. All right, there's, and we do have another Soul Herder. Snow Covered, hmm. Green, green. We have another green source there. All right, we'll take Snow Covered Island. That's fine. I mean, we get to do it again next turn. And Yarion is almost here. Uh, opponent. Bird's Paradise. Sure. How many paths have you got about it? How many paths? Wall of Blossoms. Uh, well, in that case, we'll just play Missy Rainforest. Crack it. Get another Snow Covered Forest. Wall of Blossoms draw card. Soul Herder. Take two. Do you have a path? All right. Looks like the answer this time is no. So blink of wild blossoms. Draw another card. Next turn we can Yarion if we want to, and we might want to. Ooh, another cord. Interesting. All right. Pass the turn. What can our opponent have? What is our opponent playing? Opponent passes. Hmm. One, two. One, two, three, four, five. How do we want to do this? Interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, play Snow Covered Mountain. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, let's Astrolabe. Draw a card. I think we're going to leave up Cord for Venser. Um, Astrolabe. Draw a card. Uh, do we even attack? Let's just pass. Pass the turn. Blink Wall of Blossom. So if our opponent does something busted, we can Venser Restoration Angel. Um, yeah, I think that's busted enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cortex four. Get Venser. Bounce Resto. Blink Wall of Blossoms. Draw a card. It's also possible that we should just be trying to set up the win instead of playing defensively. Like, we could have courted for Resto, and then courted for Kiki, and tried to just win that way. Little worried of our opponent comboing off somehow, I guess. Like, that, we're so far ahead as far as cards, and board state, and every metric, that I feel like it's going to be really hard for us to lose if this game keeps going. Unless our opponent gets to just randomly combo off with, like, Resto Kiki or something. I mean, because next turn we can Yarion, draw four, bounce Svencer, make Soul Hoarder huge. Actually, draw even more if we want to run out Ice Fang Quaddle. And we could... Actually, can we just win? We might be able to win. I don't even know. The deck just has too much value. <laughs> like, if we... Eternal Witness, 1, 2, 3, get back Cord. Cord for... Resto. Uh, whatever, whatever happens, we are in spectacular shape. Opponent. Passes. Um, play Noble Hierarch. Windswept Teeth. Crack Windswept Teeth. Grab a Stomping Grounds untapped. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. So I think we get in with Soul Herder. So I think what we want to do here is just cord for Resto to blink Venser and bounce something. And then next turn we can Eternal Witness Cord Kiki potentially win. And we still have Yarion if this falls apart. So get him with Soul Herder. Opponent takes it. Down to 16. Well, yeah, pass the turn. Soul Herder, blink, Venser. Um, bounce, Birds of Paradise. Opponent's gonna resto. So now we Kawaddle, draw a card. Cord, X4. Resto, blink, Venser. <laughs> so much value! Venser bounce resto, and our opponent's gonna have to pray for a wrath, I guess. I mean, this is this has been a, a dominant performance. You are not gonna outvalue this deck. 
opponent, gives us a DG, says they're locked out, and that is the power of Yarion. Well, game one, we got to see the power of Yarion. This game, we didn't actually have to cast Yarion, but just imagine for a second, rather than making our opponent miserable, eh, somehow every deck we play ends up being a land destruction deck. Also worth pointing that out, but... <laughs> Uh, uh, imagine if we had just cast Yarion last turn. Instead of getting Rasto Kiki winning the game, we would have one, two, three, four, drawn five. We could have bounced a permanent. We would have grown Soul Herder into a, I don't even know, like a tw 10 power creature, 11 power creature. Uh, and then we potentially could get the Resto, blink Yarion, do it again. It gets out of control. Yarion's insane. Yarion's insane. And we just absolutely absolutely dominated that matchup that was super impressive all right uh yes sweet all right much brew about nothing time we are yarioning in modern yarion soul herder and ooh, jingantha so this is i would guess this is humans but we'll see humans has been the it could be niv i guess Humans has been the most tierish home, I would say, of of Jingatha. Well, breeding bull tap past the turn. I don't know how we do against humans. We can clog up the board and generate value, although we don't have much real removal in the main deck. All right, there's a vial. You know, well, winds up teeth, crack winds up teeth. Get a snow covered for us, and I think we just coiling Oracle. Hitting a land would actually be spectacular. All right, Eternal Witness. Uh, that's okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. What do we... So is our plan just to combo off? It might be. Cavern of Souls. Champion of the Parish. Hmm. I'll play Snow-Covered Plains. Play... Wall of Blossoms. Draw a card. Birds of Paradise. Opponent. Gonna do some Violing. Another champion. Noblest of Hierarchs. All right. Uh, pass the turn. So we can cord one, two, three. We can cord for four next turn. Interesting. I guess we could also just hard cast slime and get rid of ether vial. That might be worth considering. Another cavern. Reflector mage. I'm gonna try to slow us down a bit. Bouncing. All right, birds of paradise. That makes sense. Opponent combat attacks. Yeah. Well, we're gonna take four, unfortunately. Untap. Misty. We could cord for Soul Herder. Otherwise, what are we doing? I guess that's what we gotta do. So, Snow Covered Island, Cord of Calling, X3. Get a Soul Herder. And I think we just blink Walla Blossom since it's a better blocker, and that is actually kind of relevant here. Blink Walla Blossoms, draw a card. Coiling Oracle has a better trigger, but. Wall Blossoms has a better body. Well, all right. No Vile activation is somewhat helpful. In our dream world, our opponent just Jingathas. We'd be fine with that. Waterlog Grove. Saxus to draw a card. All right, so not interested in Jingatha yet. Thalia's Lieutenant's probably the card we want. Okay, Mantis Rider. Yeah. Oh, that's a beating. Well, here they come. Opponent combat. Gets in. Well, we block here and take seven. Ugh, that's a lot of damage, though. Down to eight. Opponent passes. Hmm. Huh. What do we do about this? I guess maybe we Yarion and just try to play defense? Yeah, snow-covered forest. It's so much better if we can wait one more turn. One, two, three, eternal witness. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. We could, like, Birds of Paradise, Coiling Oracle, Astrolabe, but then we're still getting beaten down. Opponent still has three cards in hand. Hmm. Yeah, this is a tough turn. All right, let's... I think we got to play Creatures, so let's Coiling Oracle. Get a trigger. Wooded Foothills. Crack it. Snow-Covered Forest. Birds of Paradise. Eternal Witness. Get back Court of Calling. Pass the turn. Blink Coiling Oracle. Trigger, Grow Soul Herder. Yeah, all right. Well, see what happens. Who put a taps? We're so close to stabilizing, but we're also pretty close to being dead. 
That is the issue. Opponent. Meddling mage. Ugh. Okay. Well, it's gonna shut down our cord, I assume. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Grows the champion. Opponent, combat. Attacks, attacks. Um, so we will block with Wall of Blossoms. Go to four. Untap. Uh, well, I guess it's Yari on time. So we will play Astrolabe, draw a card. We will play Noble Hierarch. We will play Yarion. Yarion does some blinking. One, two, three, four, five. And actually six, because it grows Soul Herder. So blink everything, grow Soul Herder. Soul Herder. Pass the turn. Uh, play the land. End of turn. Soul Herder. Actually, let's see. So we want... Yeah. Soul Herder to resolve first. So Yarian puts everything back. We get a bunch of triggers. Turn of Witness gets back Wild Blossoms. Coiling Oracle. Astrolabe. Coiling Oracle. Land tapped. Astrolabe. Resto, Soul Herder, blinks Yarion. Yarion, grow Soul Herder. And this time I think we just blink Astrolabe, because we want all of our defense. So blink Astrolabe. All right, is it enough? Pota untaps. Ooh, I wish we weren't at four. Thankfully, we do have multiple layers of creatures to block. Oh, this is close. This is super close. Not having cord is making things difficult. And we don't have an easy way to just get rid of this meddling mage. Opponent gets in with champion. Wow, getting in with everything. Okay, well, block. Block. And, um, yeah, let's keep our mana. Block, block, block. Actually, this is silly. Uh, block, block, block. This attack concerns me. Opponent scoops it up? Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! They were just hoping that we forgot to block or something. Wow! Okay! I mean, that's another game. If we did not have Yari on, I don't think we win. I think we just straight up lose. Wow! Wow, wow, wow! It's so good! <laughs> Alright, so opponent's playing humans, which means we need some cards to deal with humans. Path to Exile comes in. Um, maybe, I think we definitely want Deputy of Detention. Maybe Thrag Tusk. The question, as always, is what can we cut? I think we can trim a couple Avalanche Riders. Maybe get more of a tutor target. Um, uh, maybe we, hmm. Maybe we can't Thrag Tusk. Acidic Slime. Let's go down the Acidic Slime. Actually, maybe we go one Avalanche rider Riders and keep Acidic Slime, because Acidic Slime does get rid of Aether Vial, which is relevant. I mean, that is essentially the, the plan of our deck. That's what we're trying to do. And it is kind of working. We got to cut two more cards. Hmm. Maybe we can go down one Eternal Witness. That might be wrong. And one Oracle? Ugh. Yeah, we'll try it like that. Those last cuts are tough. Tough, tough, tough. But we gotta have paths. Paths seem super essential. Although we won that time through Meddling Mage on Court of Calling, preventing our combo. <laughs> oh, Yarion, it's so good. Opponent, on the other hand, they're playing Jengatha just because it's, I think, a free roll in their deck. But, I mean, a free 5-5 five five is a free 5-5. Five five. But our deck has much more synergy with our companion than humans has with Jengatha, which is just random 5-5. Five five. Huh. Hmm. Oh, I'm really tempted to keep this. This hand has a lot of what we want, except we can't cast anything. <laughs> we need a land. Astrolabe requires snow mana. Oh, how greedy are we? How greedy are we? We have 28 lands? I don't think we can keep it. We got a mulligan. Well, all right. This we will keep. And we'll put a... I guess we put a land at the bottom. All right, 
Well, go, go, Coiling Oracle, go. Oh, that first hand, if we had a snow land instead of a normal land, would have been so perfect. Opponent, Cavern of Souls, on Hugh, Man, and the Noblest of Hierarchs. Sure. Hmm. Well, let's see. Wooded Foothills, Crack Wooded Foothills, Snow Covered Forest, and Astrolabe Draw Card. And another land's fine. We can hopefully stall out for a bit by Coiling Oracle with Ephemerate. Militia Bugler, sure. Militia Bugler is good at going long, but not the most aggressive attacker. And I don't think humans is out, gonna outgrind us. If we can stabilize, we will win the late game. Opponent does find Thalia's Lieutenant. Well, Snow Covered Island, Coiling Oracle, Trigger. Ooh, land is actually super sweet. Land means that we can start ephemerating and we get a free block here. Opponent, unclaimed territory. Yeah, that was that was a really nice hit. Thalia's Lieutenant, grow in the dorks. Opponent goes to combat, attacks. Well, let's crack one, sub teeth. Snow covered planes. Block, militia bugler, ephemerate. Trigger, astrolabe. All right, yeah. And what's the follow up? Charming Prince. Ooh, gonna blink Thalia's Lieutenant? All right, so opponent does have a clock going. Can we stabilize? Oh, they went for Militia Bugler, okay. I guess, I think we're actually happier with that. Opponent's going on the long game plan, but I don't think they win the long game against us. So we get to blink Oracle again. Hitting a land would be sweet. Hmm, Soul Herder is pretty sweet. Well, let's play Wooded Foothills. Crack Wooded Foothills. Snow Covered Forest. Soul Herder. Blink Coiling Oracle. Get a trigger. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's play Untapped. So we can flash in this Coatl if we want to. Huh? All right. Next turn could be our Yari on turn two. I mean, just like last game, it's this is all about stabilizing General Kudro to grow the humans. Yeah. That does speed up the clock. Exiles Ephemerate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Opponent. Noble High Arc. Grows the humans. Sure. Big attack. Well, let's... <sighs> Coatl, draw a card. Block here, take six. Finding a path would be ideal. Down to nine. We draw land. Hmm. Okay, how do we do this? Opponent's got two cards in hand. Well, I think we just snow-covered forest. I think we gotta play Yarion. Yarion. Yeah, it's not the greatest Yarion, but it is a 4-5, and it does grow Soul Herder. Yarion, blink Oracle, blink Astrolabe. This also gives us a chance to maybe hit a path to exile, which would be ideal. No attacks. So get back our Yarion stuff, get some triggers. Come on, path to exile. We get to draw two. All right, Birds of Paradise, land, Soul Herder, blink Yarion. And yeah, okay, no blinking. Well, pass the turn. I guess we can possibly like mass chump and then blink. All right, no another noble hierarch. That's fine. We can possibly mass chump and then blink with ephemerate. That might be our best bet here. Blink Yarion with ephemerate, which blinks everything else. There is the mantis rider. Clock increasing. Well, we'll see how our opponent attacks. We're really close. Opponent's only got one card in hand. Can we stabilize? Potet, Kabat. Gets in with Mantis Rider. All right. Well, we will just block with Yarion and then Ephemerate. And if our opponent doesn't have Path, this is pretty good. So we get to block, make white, blink Yarion. Yarion grows Soul Herder, blink blink so we take zero and this gives us another turn to just run stuff out and play defense all right so our stuff returns trigger trigger come on 
Coiling Oracle, Eternal Witness. Still not finding a path. Court of Calling. All right, so we untap. Rebound, we will just blink Coiling Oracle. Trigger, grow. Oh, Yarion's so good. Land, one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't think we can win this turn. Um, So we're going to, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so no. So we play Kawaddle, draw a card. Keep gumming up the board. Play Birds of Paradise. Play an island. Eternal Witness. Get back Ephemerate. Pass the turn. Um, no attacks. Blink Oracle. And we might have a big enough wall of defense now. Land? Cord. All right, pass the turn. Discard Acidic Slime. All right. I mean, we got a lot of blockers, which is good. And these ephemerates can protect our blockers, which is also good. Ooh. Meddling Mage. Okay. Well, I'm assuming this name's ephemerate. But I think that that's still okay. We still have enough blockers, and we can cord. Maybe our opponent names cord because they are worried about just getting comboed. That's a, yeah, opponent's in a tough position now. If they name Cord, they gotta name Cord to stop us from just killing them with the combo. But if they name, yeah, hmm, okay, sure. Gonna exile Acidic Slime. So they go with, they go with Ephemerate, but this leaves them open to just getting Kiki comboed. One, two, three, because we can mass block Cord for Resto, blink Yarion, blink everything, take zero, untap Kiki combo. Win? Opponent. Passing. Oh no, we don't have a main phase stop set. Cavern of Souls. That's the last card? Oh, alright. That's easy. Now, Court of Calling. And this is this should just be game. Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. Court for four. Oh, I guess it's not just... Well, it is just game, isn't it? Get Restoration Angel. Restoration Angel, Blink Yarion. Our opponent can use General Kudro, but that's fine because we have another cord, so we can still get Kiki, and General Kudro cannot kill. It only kills uh, creatures with power four or greater, right? Yes. All right, sure. So Yarion down. That's fine. Untap. Um, play Noble High Arc. Misty. Crack Misty. Temple Garden. Untapped. Cord number two. One, two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven, eight, X5 for Kiki Jiki. And Kiki Resto, Kiki Resto. Oh, so Yarion didn't technically win us this game, but the stabilizing power of Yarion bought us enough time to get to the point in the game where we could win with a combo. Oh, Yarion's so busted in this deck. Well, not bad, not bad. Still getting the job done with Yarion. All right, uh, yeah, sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, much brew about nothing time. We are companioning in modern, playing some Yorion Soul Herder, and uh, this is fine. I mean, we get a redraw with Astrolabe. Worst case, we draw nothing and Birds ramps us into Yorion, and Yorion can blink Astrolabe, but our man is good. I think this is, I think this is reasonable. Ooh, control? Huh, this will be interesting. Opponent not partnering. Uh, well, snow-covered forest and birds of paradise. Go. Yeah. We got all the birds, all the birds in the world. Opponent. Ooh, not control, temple garden. Oh, is our opponent playing something fair? If our opponent's playing something fair, then life is really good. Wall of blossoms. Well, we will. Um, snow-covered island. Wall of blossoms draw card. Birds of Paradise. Go. So we can actually just cast Yaria next turn if we want to. I don't think we want to yet, though. We're not getting that much value. It would be sweet to draw into, like, Acidic Slime, Avalanche Riders, something along those lines. This could be Bant Spirits, I guess. Ice Fang Quaddle. All right, so it's just, uh, just a Bant Snow deck by the looks. 
Well, they're trying to play the value plan, but they're doing it without a companion. And we have a companion. Opponent. Teferi. Time Raveler. Sure. Bounces of birds. Get in there. Get in there. Opponent passes. Um. Hmm. Well, let's Astrolabe draw. Actually, all right. Let's play Windswept Teeth. Crack Windswept Teeth. Get a snow-covered forest. Astrolabe, draw a card. More lands. Well, play Noble Hierarch. Go to combat. Attack to fairy. To fairy down. And yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess we run out another birds. Just keep playing them. Pass the turn. <laughs> Prince of Paradise beat down. Dot deck. <laughs> uh, I mean, killing to fairy is nice though. Field of ruin. <laughs> Jokes on you. We don't have basics, or don't have non-basics. Bone it. Passes. Right, let's see what we draw. More lands. Now play Misty. Go to combat. Attack our opponent. And I think we are Eon. Like, opponent doesn't have cryptic mana, so might as well try. Worst case, if it gets countered, we can try to eternal witness it back. We would like to draw cards. Come on. Come on. No counter. Coaddle. Sure. So opponent's going to redraw to try to find a counter? All right. Resolves. Exile Wall of Blossoms. Astrolabe. Um, crack Misty. Snow-Covered Forest. Still want to stay away from non-basics at the moment to keep our opponent off of Cryptic. Draw two. Ooh, Avalanche Riders for next turn. And Prismatic Vista. All right, all right, all right. Well, that's fine. And we have a 4-5, a which is good. Although these Quaddles are going to keep us from attacking too aggressively. Ephemerate would be the best. Ephemerate is such an insane draw at the moment. Opponent. Passing. Well, time to attack the mana, I think. Avalanche Riders. Well, um, that's not bad. Let's play Prismatic Vista. Make a red Av uh, Avalanche Rider, number one. Blow up Snow Covered Island. <laughs> is this Quaddle number three? Yup, Quaddle three. Go to combat. Get in with Avalanche Riders. Wow, opponent blocks. Interesting. Well, Crack Prismatic Vista, Snow Covered Mountain, and Avalanche Riders. We're always land destruction. No matter what deck we play, we're a land destruction deck. <laughs> Cut our opponent off of blue mana entirely. Pass the turn. That also turns off the death touch on Quaddle. I guess maybe, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Now we can just go beat down opponent, Snow Covered Island. Passes. Uh, we will let Avalanche Riders die. Play Astrolabe. Draw a card. Go to combat. Attack. Opponent blocks. And paths. Okay. Well, unfortunately for our opponent, we are going to Eternal Witness back Avalanche Riders. <laughs> Eternal Witness for Avalanche Rider. Avalanche Rider. <laughs> Blow up a land. And Sacred Foundry. All right. Now, I mean, if our opponent wants a Field of Ruin, they need Field of Ruin. It's going to take basically their entire turn to turn that into a colored source of mana, so we're fine with that. All right, opponent hits a land. And Supreme Verdict. All right. Well, that was good for our opponent. Oh, now we draw it. Well, Eternal Witness. Get back. Hmm. Avalanche Riders. Stomping Grounds. Untapped. Avalanche Riders. Blow up an island. Hit you for two. Pass the turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Huh. Opponent. Another snow covered island. And. Passes? Um. Yeah, let's actually pay. One, two, three, four. Pay for avalanche riders. Go to combat. Beat down. Um. Sure. Snow covered planes. Opponent. Down to 10. Well, let's Wall of Blossoms draw a card. Ooh. Ephemerate. That's good. Pass the turn. All right, opponent. All right, T. Then. So all we really want to do is get back this Yarion. We probably should have played this land, honestly. That might have been a slight misstep. Uh, opponent. Passes. All right, so we untap. Go to combat. Attack our opponent. 
Snapcaster Mage. Four path. Oh, this might be a blowout. Opponent blocks. And uh, let's Ephemerate Eternal Witness. Opponent pass it. Well, we will Ephemerate Eternal Witness. Get back Yarion. Hit our opponent. Breeding Pool untapped. Yarion. An opponent. Done. The power of Yarion. Too much for the control deck. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> It's so good. It's so good. Uh, all right. So, I mean, against control, I think we're just basically trying to outgrind our opponent. I think we can bring in the Magus. Magus of the Moon seems like it could be good in certain situations. Maybe Looming Shaman to keep their graveyard in check. Otherwise, otherwise, I mean, I feel like we got a pretty good plan. We can go down the Night of Autumn. Life total, not super, super relevant. And... Probably Huntmaster. Thragtusk would also be good. That does survive a wrath. Eh, that's fine. Let's try it like that. Graveyard hate, Magus of the Moon. Magus, probably not going to mana screw our opponent, but shutting down Mystical Sanctuary is a thing that is relevant. So just from just from that perspective, I think Magus is worth it. Maybe we can just outgrind this deck. Yarion, yes, we would like you to start in our hand. <laughs> Ooh. The the eight card life is a good life, way better than the seven card life. <laughs> oh, opponent, what do you say? What do you say? Oh boy, opponent's starting with a six card life. There is risk with this hand. We are, we are technically keeping a one lander, although we do have redraws. Snow covered island, opponent, Bazin, and a mana dork land maybe astrolabe. Well, play the land. Play the noblest of hierarchs past the turn. Field of Ruin for our opponent. Land? That is a land. So Hollowed Fountain untapped. Um, play Astrolabe. Draw a card. Play Astrolabe. Draw a card. All right, mana's good. And now we're getting to that point where, where Yarion is already looking devastating. And these cords should be good against the control deck. Oh, an opponent's missing land drops. Oh, life is getting better by the second. Opponent passes. Uh, well, we will Prismatic Vista. Crack Prismatic Vista. Snow-covered planes. Wall of Blossoms. Draw a card. And, yeah, let's get with High Arc. Start beating down. Hit our opponent. Down to 19. Oh, if our opponent taps out, we get to just run out Yarion and draw three. And have Ephemerate for the future. Mystical Sanctuary. Hmm. All right, opponent passes. Well, let's see what we draw. Land. Is it worth it? They could have a counter. I mean, we're going to go for it. Wooded Foothills. Crack Wooded Foothills. It, it's too much value to pass up. Snow Covered Forest. If they counter it, we can try to court out Eternal Witness to get it back. Yarion. All right, opponent has a mana leak. So, opponent staying alive-ish past the turn. Opponents passing. Mm, play Wooded Foothills. Pass the turn. Oh, we might be able to do a really cute play here. Okay, so crack wooded foothills. Get a snow covered mountain. Cord of calling. Uh actually, you know what? Let's just go X3. Let's just get a turtle wood. I was gonna get Venser and oh man, maybe we do get Venser. Venser pick up the land and just fizzle field of ruin. And eh, Eternal Witness is probably better. One, two, three, four, five, six. Cord of calling. For Eternal Witness. Get back Yarion. Because Yarion resolving is just insane. It's so good. Snug over to Island. We are running out of B6, but... Pass the turn. All right, opponent. <laughs> well, now you got to counter Yarion forever. Misty Rainforest for our opponent. And passes. Um, Snow Covered Island. Go to combat. Get in, hit our opponent. Down to 60. Pass the turn. Yeah, opponent's hitting land into land. We should be able to use this cord to really pressure our opponent, though. If they tap down, especially. All right, there's Uro. That's good news. So now we can cord, and if our opponent doesn't counter it, that's great. And if they do counter it, that's also great. Because then we get to Yarion. Breeding pool untapped. Yeah, you know, opponent. Passing. Yeah, this puts our opponent in a really tough position. So we will cord of calling. One, two, three, four... One, two, three, X, four. Opponent cracks. 
Pone's gonna need multiple pieces of interaction to get out of this. Because Yarian just comes down and refills our hand. And we've already got most of the lands out of our deck. So our opponent's gonna need a pretty good combination of cards to beat Yarion. Opponent mana leaks. Sure, that's fine. No, we will not pay for mana leak. Yeah, that is acceptable. So we untap. We will breeding pool untapped. Go to combat, hit our opponent. Down to 16. Um, play Yarion. Oh, Yarion's messed up. It's messed up! <laughs> oh, it's so good. Okay, resolves. So we will target Wall Blossoms, Eternal Witness, Astrolabe, Astrolabe. Um, Birds of Paradise. End of turn. Get back the dorks. Oh, opponent cracks. Temple Garden, untap down to 10. Path on Yarion. Um, yeah, that's fine. Sure. Get the last basic out of our deck. Get everything back. Draw three, Eternal Witness back, a Court of Calling. And pass the turn. All right, opponent. I don't even think we really care about Uro. I feel like our opponent needs a Wrath to have any chance. And I'm not sure that a Wrath is even enough, in all honesty. Because we can go hard at our opponent's land with this Avalanche Rider if we want to. <laughs> Stake is busted. <laughs> oh, opponent. What do you say? What do you say? Opponent plays a land. Ooh. Tapping a lot of mana. If we can keep our opponent off islands, too, it keeps Mystic Sanctuary from being a annoyance. Teferi? Okay, sure. Uh, I don't think I've ever been less scared of a Teferi. Opponent draws a card. And passes. Untaps. Uh, so we will play Stomping Grounds untapped. Play Avalanche Rider. Blow up a land. Opponent's going to Snapcaster Mage. Sure. For Mana Lee. Hmm. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Court of Calling. For, hmm, Magus of the Moon? Unfortunately, that's not the land we wanted to blow up, but... Blow up a land, go to combat, attack to fairy. Opponent's going to block. Well, Ephemerate, blow up a land, and pass the turn. Oh, going to tick up? Okay, sure. And I think this means it's over. Opponent does find an island. I don't know how our opponent gets out of this, though. The Magus of the Moon sideboard tech. Jace the Mind Sculptor, sure. Draw those cards, opponent. Draw those cards. It's pretty amazing that I think Yarion just outdoes, outdoes these Planeswalkers in terms of card advantage. If our opponent tries to bounce Magus, I think we got to blink it. Opponent ticks up. Sure, 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 sure. That is allowed. And opponent, hmm, only has red mana. So let's Ephemerate Eternal Witness. Get back Court of Calling. And opponent scoops it up. Wow. Three up, three down. Yarion, we have not lost a game. We have not lost a game with this deck. <laughs> Busted. Busted. <laughs> oh, we are just crushing the modern format with 80 cards. Oh, so much value. So much value. Uh, Yeah, that was another good one. <laughs> Yarion. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right. More much room on nothing time. We are still Yarioning in modern, and uh, we've already fed the children. Now the quest is. <laughs> now the quest is for the five zero. So far we're, <laughs> so far we're uh, three zero in matches, six zero in games, uh, and Yarion has been absolutely absurd. Like literally, it's it's insane. It's even better than I expected, and I had very high hopes. For Yarion. Uh, but we've just been... We've just been crushing people. Yes, we would like to start with Yarion in hand. Thank you. <laughs> I think... Oh, all right. We got to mulligan this. Ooh, opponent is Lurasang. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, dear. We're going to five. Uh, and we don't have a way... Oh, jeez. All right. Well, uh, yes. Okay. The good times uh, might be over. 
<laughs> oh, no. Uh, yeah, please lands. I don't think we can go lower than five. We have to just hope we top deck a land, and then if we draw a land, we have a lot of redraws, and then Yarion redraws to the max. Ooh, but we're up against an opponent who is also starting with eight cards. And so this is where you can see, I mean, so this game, we start with, I guess, essentially six cards in hand, and our opponent starts with eight. That's not good. That's not good at all. Opponent, Sacred Foundry. Oh, this looks like Burn. Mm-hmm. Definitely Burn. Lure is Burn. Well, in some ways, well, I guess this, this is going to be bad. So this is Burn that gets to draw an extra card every turn, and we can't kill Luris. Can we get a land? Oh, Jesus. All right, the noblest of high arcs. <laughs> Not the best in the face of a grim lava mancer and a bunch of burn spells. And a lack of lands. Ponet has a searing blaze, sure. Oh, dear. Ponet, combat, hits us. Yeah, 16. Land? No. Oh, boy. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so now our opponent. Oh, another bobble. Yeah. So you know what's really scary? Normally the downside of burn is they can run out of action. Uh, that is much harder to do when you have Luris and Mishra's Bobble to draw an extra card every turn. Well, we did hit a land, but we're also down to 13. And opponent still draw an extra card, sure. Uh, well, huh. Prismatic Vista, crack it. Down to 12, I think we're just too little too late here. Snug over to Island. Wall of Blossoms draw a card. Boros Charm down to eight. <laughs> More Wall of Blossoms. Opponent Sunbaked Canyon. And Lightning Helix. Yeah, okay. Well, that was that was unfortunate. We just ended up way too low on resources. Opponent didn't even need to draw a bunch of extra cards with Luris. <laughs> uh, okay, so Burn. Well, we gotta bring in, we can bring in Burrington Forge Thunder, bring in Path to Exile, we can bring in Thrag Tusk. We don't have anything that's just like, oh, maybe we gotta bring in Yixit Jailer? That doesn't actually stop anything, does it? Yeah, we don't really have a way, maybe Oof? Wow, it seems insane to bring in Oof to stop the Bobbles against a Burn deck, but that might be the world we live in. Wait, Lavinia. Okay, L Lavinia might be better than Oof. What I think is pretty bad is Avalanche Riders is pretty bad. Acidic Slimes is pretty bad. We need things that gain us life or otherwise stop our opponent from going off with Luris. Make us the moon, Mind Sensor. Yeah, I think that's all we got. What else do we cut? We got to cut three more cards. Um, maybe like a Coiling Oracle, an Eternal Witness, and Venser? Yeah, try like that. Oh, it seems so awkward to have to bring in Collector Oofs. <laughs> So awkward, but maybe we get to start with more cards in hand this game. We will play first, and we will Yarion. Eh, okay, this hand's actually actually pretty pretty interesting against our opponent's deck. Uh, Burnt of Forge Tender does kind of shut things down in the early game. Uh, so we, how do we want to do this in the least painful way possible? Hmm. Prismatic Vista, crack it. Snow-covered planes. Forge Tender. Go. Scalding Tarn for our opponent. Cracks it. Opponent, they do have, yeah, Luris. Lava spikes us to 60. It passes. Ooh, Thrag Tusk is good if we can get to it. Well, crack this. Snow Covered Forest. Wall of Blossoms. Draw a card. Eh, get in with Forge Tender. Yeah, I think Thrag Tusk is what we're hoping for the most. We might have to just start ephemerating Wall of Blossoms if we don't draw lands. Scalding Tard, but it cracks it. Sacred Foundry, untap down to 15. And Eidolon. That's also not great. Opponent passes. Well, Birds of Paradise. Take two. Stomping Grounds tapped. Uh, pass the turn. Inspiring Vantage. Lava Spikes us. Down to 10. And more Eidolons. I think this is okay. So we're at 10. We're going to go down to 6, but up to 11. And then we have Thrag Tusk. Ooh, that's even better. All right, play the Mountain. Thrag Tusk up to 15. And and that's very good for us. Our opponent might get locked under their Eidolons here, honestly. 
opponent combat passes um I'll play the tap land go to combat i think we start chipping in with forge tender and if our opponent taps out or taps down enough yeah if our opponent taps out opponent's not going to be able to cast many more spells that is going to become an issue opponent's down to six. Oh, they were targeting thrag tusk interesting okay hmm yeah, we probably would have done something slightly different if we knew about that. Combat, opponent, no attacks. Well, go to combat, get in with forge tender, hit our opponent to five, and yeah, let's coiling oracle. We do take our beats, but our opponent just can't cast many spells. Down to 11. Cord is nice. Cord is very nice. All right, opponent. <laughs> what you gonna do? Uh, and scoops it up. All right, so Th Thragtus came through, and our opponent just uh, locked themselves under Eidolon, so that went much better. This still feels like a tricky matchup. Maybe we're too scared of Fluris? Should we not be playing Collector Oofs? Thragtus seems like our most important card. All right, let's just, let's, all right, yeah. All right, all right, all right. If we get Luris, we get Luris. The problem is our opponent, burn drawing an extra card every turn for free is absurd. But we do have paths. So if we find a path, we can try to save it for Luris and minimize the damage. If there is an upside, it's there's only one Luris. So if we deal with it, it's dealt with forever. Although it does require two for wanting ourselves to deal with it the first time. Well, can we keep up with burn on the play? We will reveal Yarion. Um, wow, okay, well, <laughs> if we live for a bit, this hand's insane. We have Huntmaster and Thrag Tusk, which is about as good as it gets as far as life gain in our deck. And, all right, no one drop is nice. Well, Snow Covered Island, Astrolabe, draw a card. Now our plan is just try to live long enough to cast Huntmasters and Thrag Tusks. That is the entirety of our plan. Opponent, Eidolon. Well, Misty Raid Forest. Crack Misty Raid Forest. Snow-covered Forest. Wall of Blossoms. Take two, unfortunately. And pass the turn. Mountain for our opponent. Swift Spia. They better not have Searing Blaze. Searing Blaze is a blowout. Tags attacks. We will block Eidolon. Okay, Boros Charm. Oh, this is going to be super close. 13, 11, untap. Hmm. Play Lavidia down to nine. I don't know if we're going to live long enough. I wish we were on the play. Down to nine. Stopping rounds tapped. <laughs> Ooh, past the turn, opponent. Now I think we're rooting for our opponents to just lure us and not kill us. Ooh, more Swift Spears. Yeah. Opponent with the big attack. We block Eidolon. We block Swift Spear. Do we die? Oh, Boros Charm. That's bad. That's very bad. <clears throat> down to five. Down to three. Well, yeah. Down to one. Huntmaster. Back up to three. This isn't a safe spot to be, though. Three is still a number where we're dead to a single burn spell. About it. Nothing? Nothing? <laughs> yeah, opponent has it. Ugh, boy, so close. Well, ugh, 5 -0 dream, dead. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm, Cl that was really close. I think if we were on the play instead of on the draw this game, we almost certainly would have been able to win. Uh, we had our two best one-ofs in hand, but uh, burn on the play with uh, lots of one-drops. Ugh. Uh-uh. All right. Well, guess Yarian can't win them all. All right. Much brew about no uh, nothing time. We are Yarianing in modern. Yarian, soul herder. Opponent, no companion. Uh, opponent, they have not got the companion message yet. <laughs> uh, we will, we will keep. This hand's fine. I mean, we get a bunch of redraws. See what our opponent's doing. Hopefully they're not fast comboing. Oh my god, they're in fact. <laughs> well, all right. Uh, okay, so in fact, on the <laughs> with, with them winning the die roll is going to be going to be rough, potentially. Uh, potent. 
We don't actually have, like, a way to kill an infect creature in our main deck. So if they just play Bladed Agent, we're just, okay. Or Ink Moth Nexus. Oh, and Bladed Agent. Oh, my God. <laughs> Done! Done! <laughs> well, okay, so I guess that's good, though. We're getting to see... We're getting to see the good and the bad <laughs> of uh, of Soul Herder. And, in fact, on the play with our deck not believing in removal is definitely is definitely the bad. Uh, we're probably just dead this turn. Uh, I'm not sure there's a card in our deck, honestly, that... I mean, at the same time, I don't think that this is Yarion's uh, fault, really. Um, if this same thing happened and we were playing an older build of Soul Herder without Yarion... We would be just as dead. <laughs> it's not It's not because we're Yarioning that we're having this issue. It's because we're a deck that doesn't really have removal and, in fact, is on the play. Opponent's going to pump. I guess our best bet is maybe our opponent just doesn't have pump spells somehow. If we can combo off, land? All right, so we get a land. Oh, play Windswept Teeth. We can't stop this Blighted Agent, though. Is there, a, is there any card in our deck that does anything here? Do we really just not have a way to to interact with this? Venser? We have one Venser. That's sort of a way, but there's a spell Skype. Hmm. Well, let's Coiling Oracle number two. Land, maybe? Astrolabe. Cragwin's Subteeth. Snow Covered Forest. Noble High Arc. Go. Ooh, pass the turn. Yeah, in fact, it's not a matchup that we're especially uh, prepared for. <laughs> Even in our sideboard, we're not, we don't really have an effect hate. If only we were a Solemnity deck. <laughs> Opponent, gonna fire a big buff by the looks. Oh, scale, okay, scale up. So that's six, seven, dead. All right, yeah. Well, uh, that is how this matchup is likely to go a high percentage of the time. <laughs> I think it might get, like, a tiny bit better after sideboarding, but uh, but not much. All right, anything that does things against Infect, we can bring in Deputy of Detention. We can bring in Path to Exiles. I guess we can bring in Magus of the Moon just as a jank em out plan. And that's about it. Oh, boy, this, yeah. This feels challenging. Uh, okay, so, what are we cutting? We can trim a couple Avalanche Riders, most likely. Well, yeah. Trim a couple Avalanche Riders. Night of Autumn doesn't do anything. I guess you could cord it out and destroy Ink Moth, but that still seems like a stretch. Um, Huntmaster's not super great. I guess it's kind of removal, but it requires flipping, which is tough. Um... Restos, Vencers, go down the Acidic Slime, and I guess one Wall of Block. Well, let's go down one Eternal Witness. Actually, Eternal Witness for Path seems helpful. We we'll go down one Wall of Blossoms. Try it like that. Uh, all right, so if there's good news, it's that we get to be on the play for game two, which is helpful. Eh, yeah, Yarion, sure. Uh, okay, we actually have a Path, and we have some Ramp, and we have a Quaddle. Well, this is about as much as I think we can hope for. Drawing uh, something like Court eventually would be nice. Well, Snow-Covered Forest and No Black. Go. Waterlog Groove for our opponent and the noblest of hierarchs. Ooh, a second. Okay, now this is all we can hope for. Two paths. Uh, Birds of Paradise. Prismatic Vesta. Pass the turn. Yeah, two pass. <laughs> it is not going to get much better than two pass for our deck. Angboth, Nexus, and Glistener Elf, and Blighted Agent. Well, we will. Crag Prismatic Vista, Snow Covered Island, Run Out, Coaddle Draw Card. Oh, uh, it passes. Ooh, Venser. All right, so we will Path Blighted Agent. Wooded Foothills, past the turn. So this lets us turn on Death Touch on Coatl and Venser if necessary. Opponent going to go to combat. Opponent going to attack. Uh, sure. So we will block Ink Moth, crack Wooded Foothills, turn on Death Touch just in case. Snow Covered Forest. Okay, we're fine with that. Another Ink Moth. Um. All right. So. End of turn, 
Venser, Bounce Ink Moth, Untap, uh, Play Astrolabe, Draw Card, Misty Raid Forest, Wall of Blossoms, Draw Card. Oh, Ephemera is good. Ephemera is very good. All right, so this means we have two interactive spells. Uh, yeah, let's let's be down with Venser. <laughs> Okay, so now I actually like where we're at. We have we have Path and Ephemera on Venser. And next turn we can Yarion and draw some cards, get more Venser triggers. So I think we're actually in a pretty good spot at the moment. Opponent combat. Attacks. Well, we will definitely block with Wall of Blossoms. Um, all right, Crack, Misty Rainforest. Take a... What do we need? I guess red, in case we draw a Kiki. Um, yeah, let's Ephemerate Venser. Bounce Ink Moth. Untap. Rebound. Ephemerate Venser. Bounce Snow Covered Forest. Wooded Foothills. Crack Wooded Foothills. I mean, we're gonna really get our opponent down to limited resources here. Temple Garden, Yarion. I don't really want to attack here because our opponent could have a pump spell and kill Venser, and Venser seems insane at the moment. So Yarion, uh, one, two, three, pass the turn, end of turn, we get everything back, Venser, bounce Waterlog Grove, draw two, opponent cracks it, so now we will, actually no, we'll wait, we'll wait till our opponents, well, when do we do this? Yeah, let's do it now, let's path Glistener Elf. But I could have Force of Negation, I guess. Okay, so in fact, threats dealt with. Opponent has not a lot going on at the moment. Well, now we need to kill our opponent before they can rebuild. Ink Moth returns. Oh, not Blighted Agent, not Blighted Agent. Oh no, oh dear. That is the last card we wanted to see here. Literally the last. Oh, Prismatic Vista, crack it, thin the deck. Ooh, not great. Snow-covered planes. Run out. Coatl draw a card. Ooh, more lands. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, attack, attack. Oh, yeah, that Blighted Agent is the absolute last thing we needed our opponent to draw. So now we are most... Oh, there's a decent chance we just die this turn. Oh, all that work for nothing. <laughs> Bonus. Snow-covered forest. Spell Skype for protection. Scale up. And another pump spell for the win. And mutagenic growth. And mutagenic growth. All right. Yeah, that does it. Oh, that blighted agent draw was super key. Well, I guess they could have made something else unblockable. And that's 10 in fact with the high arc trigger. Oh, well, we got to see, I guess, the good and bad of Yarion. I think Yarion's very good. Uh, we ended up with a 3-2, which is a little bit disappointing just because we started off, uh, 3-0, but, uh, we got to see the last two games. We played against aggro combo decks, and we played against them, uh, winning the die roll both times, so we were on the draw both matches, and that's where things can be rough. Uh, our deck, while it is super insane at grinding out value, uh, as we saw against Infect, we don't have a lot of answers. In our main deck, we have, like, zero answers. And then if there is a cause to Yarion, it's that even after sideboarding, we do have 80 cards, which that is... <sighs> most games, it wasn't even noticeable. We function like a completely natural, normal uh, deck. But when you're up against Infect, and Path is kind of your only relevant answer... It does decrease your odds of starting with Path in your opening hand by 9% or something. So that is that is a factor. That does come into play. On the other hand, our first three matches, uh, I feel like we won almost exclusively because of Yarion. Uh, it, was, it was so insane. And even in our losing efforts, it was still fine. It's just that our deck isn't really... Isn't especially designed to play against Infect. Like, that's not... <laughs> 
that's not really where we want to be. We saw against Bird, we were actually super close to winning that match. Uh, I still think if we were on the play rather than on the draw, we, and we're able to play our Thrag Tusks and our Hunt Masters, uh, in that last game we would have most likely won. But we were on, on the wrong side of the play draw debate uh, there. So I think the deck's actually really uh, powerful. And I think Yarion, I believe we will be seeing more and more of it. But regardless, we get to, uh, we get to open a treasure chest. We have a treasure chest to open. Oh, I thought we were going to go 5-0 there for a minute. But our bad matchups came at the end. Well, all right, let's crack open our one treasure chest for Yari on Soul Order. Well, we get a Mox Ruby, which, if these were paper treasure chests, would be very exciting. Unfortunately, on Magic Online, Mox Ruby is currently $2.44. So, uh, that's still fine. We're not going to complain, but it's not like paper where it is meh. $3,000, something like that. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll be back in a bit with a wrap up. So what do we learn this week about 80 card Yariad Soul Herder in Modern? And overall, we played a league. We went three and two, which that's a fine finish. Although it was a little disappointing because we started off 3-0 and 6-0 in games, just like crushing everyone. And then the wheels came off a little bit at the end. But I think actually it was kind of good that that happened as far as actually evaluating the deck. So what we saw from this deck was in any sort of like fair grinding matchup, we were insane. We took down humans, Bant Snow Control, another like Fiend Artisan, creature mid rangey deck. And we just absolutely dominated those matchups, mostly because of Yarion. Like the deck is good anyway, but I felt like in our first three matches, we just absolutely played a Yarion, drew like five cards, had this massive flyer, then we'd flicker it and do it again and just go off and win the game. So Yarion was super key and awesome there. On the other hand, in our last two games, we played against Lurus Burn and then also Infect, which are kind of like aggro combo decks, essentially. And that's where things were much, much more difficult. In those matchups, Yarion was often too slow to come down, but that's fine. I mean, it's still hanging out in our sideboard. But our lack of removal was especially punishing against Infect, and we saw the downside of it. Like, for example, we have those four Path to Exiles in our sideboard. Those are our best cards against in fact, just having a way to like kill a blighted agent or whatever. But because we're 80 cards, we're like 10% less likely to have one in our opening hand, which against a deck like Infect is actually a pretty massive deal. So we did see some of the drawbacks of being 80 cards in those fast combo matchups. Although I do think that some of those problems could probably be fixed by the build. We're just like not built to play against Infect uh, in specific in that style of deck because we're just not playing removal in the main deck. We easily could be playing pass in the main deck and more removal spells if we wanted to. But really, the deck felt competitive. It's super fun to play. Like sometimes we are a land destruction deck that literally just like blew up all of our opponent's lands. Sometimes we're just this grindy value you card draw deck against humans. We're just clogging up the board, making a bunch of blockers and winning. Eventually, we got the combo finish to close things out. So I actually think if you are a Soul Herder fan, I think that you should play this build or some build with Yari. And I think having an extra card in hand and having it be a card that is extremely relevant to what the deck's trying to do with all these enter the battlefield triggers to reuse, I think that it means Yarion is just the future of the Soul Herder archetype and other similar archetypes. I'm sure we'll panharmonicon with it at some point and stuff like that, but if you're playing a deck where the blink is actually relevant, Yarion is actually just absolutely absurd, and it is one of the best cards in our decks. It is silly to even think that it's not worth giving up a sideboard slot, a single sideboard slot, to have an 8th card in hand and have it be a card that is actually really powerful. So the deck was really fun, it was really strong, but fast combo style decks do seem to be an issue, and that's probably going to be true no matter what. While we do have all the one of silver bullets at our sideboard, with 80 cards, how often are we going to fight them? I guess we do have Court of Calling, which can help, but still, even with Court of Calling and these one ofs, we're not going to find our idol on that often against Storm, or a Lavinia or whatever, against a Tron deck, or a Magus of the Moon against a Tron deck. So that is a concern, but I think that the upside of Yarion far outweighs the little bit of inconsistency you're adding to the deck, and the deck's super fun to play. So, that's Yarion Soul Herder. That's our bunch of brew deck for this week. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing the power of Yarion Sky Nomad in action. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.